Welcome guys! The new sprint sensitivity setting has changed some fundamental things about how the joystick works, but I've noticed there are some misconceptions about it and many players are using 100% sensitivity which is not optimal. I'll explain exactly how this setting works as well as which sensitivity range is best depending on your playstyle. I'll also show you how to get the perfect joystick size and position as well as which control layout you should use. Now these are the main topics I'll go over. I always leave timestamps in the description so feel free to skip to a specific topic. But first, make sure you leave a like to help me grow this channel and bring more content to you guys. Let's begin. Joystick Layout the Type 1 layout and the control settings make the left side of your screen control the movement no matter where you touch. The center of the joystick is simulated. It can be wherever you choose to start moving the joystick from. This is very easy to use as it decreases the possibility of making a mistake when controlling your movement, so I recommend this for most players. The Type 3 layout is a bit more complicated because it limits the movement control to the joystick only. If you touch outside of the joystick, the camera focus will be moved instead. The center of the joystick stays fixed on one specific location. This can be advantageous for some players because it makes your movement much more consistent and if you can get used to it, you will eventually know exactly where to touch in order to move to a specific direction. I personally use Type 1 mainly because it's best for driving with Type 2 vehicle controls. However, for most players I recommend Type 3 unless you're a complete beginner at the game. If PUBG Mobile ever allows customization of the Type 2 vehicle joystick size, I'll definitely switch to Type 3 because it'd make my movement more consistent especially with advanced leaning. Joystick Size and Position I've tested directional sensitivity as well as sprint and walking sensitivity for the joystick in Type 1 and there seems to be no difference regarding the size configuration. Also, the center of the joystick is simulated so the position doesn't matter either. However, there could be other variables at play that we still haven't accounted for. For example, the visual aspect of the joystick might be important for some players in order to maintain movement consistency. The Type 3 layout needs a thorough customization of the joystick size and position as this determines the precise placement of your finger in order to control the direction of movement. I suggest you customize your joystick size and position no matter which control layout you use as this will make you a much more consistent player. Joystick Calibration I'll show you how to precisely calibrate both the size and position of your joystick. To do this you need to open any drawing app. When you're ready, simply close your eyes and place your left thumb on the screen where it's most comfortable. Now swipe it to the right to draw a line. Memorize the position and length of this line. You can also draw over the screen with a real erasable marker to make it easier once you switch to your PUBG Mobile control settings. Place the center of the joystick on the left edge of the line and adjust its size until it reaches the middle of it. Your joystick is now perfectly calibrated. Sprint Sensitivity now the sprint sensitivity setting overrides the default joystick sensitivity by modifying the limit in which your character will start running manually before automatic sprinting. If your finger stays below this limit, your character will move at walking speed. Here's a demonstration. You can see how my character starts running once my finger reaches the sensitivity limit. Increasing this setting will move the limit closer to the center of the joystick. Now you will instantly sprint when moving. And decreasing this setting will move the limit further away from the center of the joystick. Now it'll be too difficult to reach the sprint limit. After comparing these two extremes, you might be left with the impression that setting the sprint sensitivity at 100% will be the best choice. However, this is not the case. There is a huge disadvantage that nobody has talked about so far, which is why I felt the need to explain it in this video. Increasing the sprint sensitivity proportionally reduces your control over the movement of your character during specific situations. This is because walking speed has an important purpose when looting or fighting behind cover. Controlled evasive movement. This movement is not well known but is incredibly advantageous in PUBG Mobile. Most players take cover by staying still behind a box or a tree. This is dangerous because it increases your chances of getting shot in the head by an enemy you are unaware of. To fight the odds, you simply have to move in circles while looting or taking cover. This way it's much more difficult for an opponent to hit a deadly first shot, thus giving you more reaction time. 
To control the movement, you simply modify the speed at which you rotate the joystick, but to do this you must have some space under the sprint limit for you to be able to move it at walking speed in order to properly control it. If your sprint sensitivity is too high, you will automatically skip the walking animation to instantly start the sprint animation while doing this, which will reduce the control you have over the precise movement of your character. Also, micro adjustments in your exact position will be more difficult as you'll instantly move with sprinting speed. This causes you to have more difficulty when leaning out of cover as you'll slip out and expose more of your body. Here's a movement comparison. As you can see with 100% sensitivity, your movement is unstable as shown by the glitches in the animation of your character. You can still move evasively, but it's much more difficult to maintain directional precision. Thus, the control you have over your exact position is decreased. This results in higher chances of slipping out of thin cover. Having a balanced sensitivity allows you to maintain control over your movement by staying behind cover while still moving around. It makes it much more comfortable for you to move the joystick in circles without worrying about accidental sprinting. Since 100% sensitivity makes sprinting pretty much instant, I recommend it only if you're a slow player or have short thumbs. If you're an experienced player, there's no reason to set it too high as that decreases control over your joystick. You're most likely fast enough to move your finger to sprint as quickly as you need. Something else you need to know is that sprint sensitivity does not affect your jiggle movement in any way whatsoever. It doesn't make you quicker or faster. So this is because while firing, your character movement is locked at walking speed. Also, another thing to bear in mind is that you can only sprint forwards and diagonally. This means that this section of the joystick is not affected by sprint sensitivity, only the forward section is. Sprint Sensitivity Calibration To calibrate the sprint sensitivity, you need to take two things into account, sprint reflexes and movement control. The value you set must be balanced between these two. The lower the value, the more movement control you have. The higher the value, the quicker your sprint reflexes will be. If you set it too high, you'll already know what happens. You'll have less control over precise movements. However, if you set it too low, you'll have to move your thumb a lot in order to sprint manually. This does two things. It makes you an incredibly slow player since sprinting will be more difficult, and it lowers your visibility by covering your screen up with most of your finger. I recommend a value between 30 to 70%. This keeps you away from experiencing the disadvantages of the extreme ends of these settings. Let's begin the calibration process. Start with 50%, then work your way towards the perfect setting using these two exercises. Movement Control Stand on top of the box and move your joystick in perfect circles. Make sure to avoid falling over the edge. Feel free to modify your finger movement to compensate for slight imperfections. If the sprint animation starts glitching for even a fraction of a second, reduce the sprint sensitivity until your character animation stays completely smooth during the whole drill. Sprint Reflex Take cover behind these boxes and sprint manually between each one. Increase the sprint sensitivity until you feel comfortable with the speed of the swipe motion your thumb makes to begin sprinting. Feel free to go back and forth between each exercise. You need to balance the sensitivity between reflexes and control until you find a percentage that you feel completely comfortable with. I personally set it at 40%, but your optimal value might be different depending on your device and finger size as well as which one of the two gameplay mechanics you prioritize. Now that you have perfectly set up all of your joystick settings, you need to practice these training drills for 5 minutes each in order to get accustomed to the new configuration. Exercise number 1. Joystick Control This drill is the same as the one you calibrated the movement control with. Simply use a box and move in circles while avoiding the edges. This exercise helps you get used to maintaining control over your movement in order to avoid drifting away from the intended spot you want to be at, whether it be looting over a crate or taking cover behind a tree. Exercise number 2. Sideways Precision Place yourself over one of these rails and make sure they are visible at the bottom of the screen. Now simply move repeatedly from left to right while keeping the rails at the bottom of the screen. 
This exercise helps to increase your precision and speed when jiggling because you learn to maintain a straight path with your finger over the joystick. Exercise number 3. Compound Training Take cover behind these boxes but only lift your left thumb when aiming. You'll always be moving whether it be evasively behind cover or while sprinting from box to box. This will help you get used to the sprint sensitivity you adjusted previously by training both movement mechanics equally in a realistic simulation of combat. Make sure you maintain some distance between yourself and the box you're taking cover behind. Don't put your face against it because this will make it difficult for you when aiming your weapon. Exercise number 4. Serpentine Trail Move between these sticks to train your serpentine movement. Some people also call it zigzag movement. Once you reach the end, simply do the same but backwards. This exercise helps you master your joystick control by sprinting diagonally with precise movements that will help you avoid touching the sticks as well as moving backwards in order to train your backwards jiggle technique. You only need to train these exercises once for 5 minutes each. There's no need to repeat them every day. Simply practice until you master your joystick. Usually this takes 5 minutes but you can do it for longer if you feel the need. I wish you the best of luck on the battlegrounds, and if you want to keep improving on PUBG Mobile, make sure you subscribe and watch any of these videos.